In my previous video, I showed how to capture a hang dump using WinDebug. In this video, let me show you a handy command to analyze deadlocks caused by critical sections. Okay, let me create a hang dump that has a deadlock. How I will do that is that I will run an application that was intentionally created to create a hang dump that has a deadlock. I will put the link to the source code in the description below if you want to have a look at the source code. But the application is not important. All you need is a hang dump that has a deadlock caused by critical sections. Okay, let me switch to the application right now. What you're seeing on the screen is an application that I wrote that will intentionally create a hang dump. It has two buttons, lock and lock within thread. What the buttons do is that both the buttons execute a function that will hold on to a critical section. Lock holds it on thread 0 and lock within thread holds it in another thread. What I'll do is I will click lock within thread first that would hold the critical section and then I'll click lock which will now deadlock the application. If I try to click again on any of the buttons, it's not going to work and the application has hung. Let me switch to WinDebug and attach non-intrusively. I put a video in this playlist that shows how to attach non-intrusively. If you need help, to find that option, then go and watch that video or just Google how to attach WinDebug non-intrusively. The reason I'm going to do that is because WinDebug needs to launch a remote thread in order to attach and it may not be able to do so if the program has fully deadlocked. So it's easier to just attach non-intrusively if you do not know if the program has fully deadlocked. Okay, let me find the application and attach to it. There we are. I'm going to attach non-invasively and there we are. So now WinDebug has paused the application in memory. Uh, what I will proceed to do is just resume the traits and then I would take a memory dump. Okay, let's just uh, resume the traits. There we are. So now if I look at the trait, I see that, oh, one trait is suspended. Um, that is actually intentional. I did write the program to suspend the trait once it's deadlocked. Um, but we won't care so much about that. I'm going to take memory dump. If you have symbols, uh, you don't have to load symbols at this point because I just want to take a memory dump. But if you want to just analyze uh, at this point, you can just load the symbols. I'm just going to avoid that because I'm going to take the memory dump first. Then I'm going to open the memory dump and then I'm going to load symbols. Okay, take the memory dump by using the uh, dump command. Um, always specify slash ma. That means mini dump all. Uh, the reason is that you need the uh, memory dump to have all the parts to it in order to read it. it it's just simpler, just put slash ma. So I'm going to take the memory dump. There we are. Dump has successfully been written. At this point, um, I think to make it simple, I'm just going to kill the application and I'm just going to open the memory dump. Um, you can actually just detach from the application if you suspect that you can get the program running again. But since this is just a test scenario, I'm, I'm just going to kill the application and I'm just going to load the uh, memory dump. So I just go here, I just go open dump, I put the path to the dump. There we are, dmp1.dump and open it. And now WinDebug will load. Uh, this is the point you need to load symbols. On my machine, um, symbols are already loaded because uh, what I have, I have done is I have actually added the symbols to an environment variable. So I'm not going to type any of the commands to load symbols. But if you need to load symbols, um, do it at this point. If you need help, there is a video in this playlist how to load symbols or just go online and Google how to load symbols. It's pretty easy. Uh, I just like to use environment variables because it's easier to set it up. So I have my symbols over here. I'm just going to do dot .reload. Uh, you don't need to do this unless you actually modify symbols, but I want to do it just to make sure that uh, there are no errors in the uh, reading of the symbol parts. At this point, um, we are ready to run some analysis and this is where we get into the uh, meat of this video, which is the uh, locks command. So what we do is we run this plugin called locks. This command locks is actually part of a standard set of uh, commands that is shipped with every WinDebug. You don't need to load any like 
like plugin because it's already loaded by default. What it does, what Locks does, is that it will walk through the entire memory dump and it will look at all the critical sections and it will try to find if there's a deadlock. If there is a deadlock, it will actually write out the address of the deadlock and the owning thread. If there are no deadlocks, it will just go through and say that the number of critical sections that are scanned is blah and there's no deadlock. In this case, we have one deadlock and it's owned by this thread over here, 3E40. And this is the handle of the uh, deadlock. Let's take a look at thread 3E40. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a tilt and I'm going to look at the threads and I can see that thread 3E40 is uh, suspended. Now don't don't worry about the uh, prefix for the thread over here. Uh, this is the uh, thread ID. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to thread number 1 which is 3E40 and I'm just going to type uh, KB. What this does is it dumps out the stack for this thread. Now, I had set up symbols earlier, so it's going to be really fast for my computer. It's just going to read all the symbols. And what I can see here is this thread is suspended. Now, if the thread is suspended, it may have already passed the point where it owns the lock. So we don't really know what else is holding this lock, but we know that this thread has this lock. At this point, we know that this thread is suspended and it owns the critical section. So let's find the other threads that may have actually tried to acquire the lock. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do tilde asterisk KB, which is run KB on every thread. Now this command is very, very slow. But what I've done is I've actually taken a memory dump of a process with only two threads. So it's going to be very fast. But generally, if when you do this, you want to leave Bindibug aside because it's going to take very long. Um, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to dump out all the threads so that I can actually see which thread is trying to acquire the lock. Let's scroll up and look at all the threads. My process only has two threads, so that's pretty easy. Uh, as soon as I scroll up, I see that thread zero is waiting on a lock and it has entered a critical section and um, this is the deadlock. It's waiting for the um, critical section to be uh, available. So this is the handle to the uh, critical section. And if we run locks again over here, we see that it's the same handle that we have for locks. So this confirms that thread zero is trying to acquire a lock that is already held by thread one. And this is the cause of the deadlock. I wrote this program specifically to create this deadlock and to be very fast it's in anal analyzing it. But if you have a memory dump with a lot of threads, this technique really does work, but you need to just give it a bit of time to analyze. And if you do have very complicated deadlocks, this might be the only way to accurately analyze to get to the source of which threads are actually waiting and which threads own the critical sections. So essentially, uh, let me just switch back to full screen. So essentially, uh, this is a quick way to find a deadlock. Um, all you gotta do is just run locks and if the uh, deadlock is in critical sections, you're gonna find it. Very important when you capture the memory dump, you have to capture the memory dump with all the information or if you can attach to a process, just run locks in the process itself. I don't recommend doing that because if the process crashes or wind debug crashes or anything bad happens, you're gonna lose that deadlock. It's better to capture a memory dump and then from the memory dump, analyze the deadlock. Um, that way you can keep trying. If you make a mistake, never mind. You can start another bin debug. You can, you can keep trying over and over again. You don't have to worry about trying to reproduce the deadlock. There are certainly other ways to find deadlocks. I just want to show this way as the first video. I'll make more videos to show other techniques and other automatic commands uh, for mutexes, for semaphores, for other kinds of handles. So this is just the first of a series of commands to find deadlocks. Um, there are more sophisticated techniques, especially for re-entrancy and more obscure ways of creating a deadlock. Uh, I'll make more videos in future. A gentle reminder, um, subscribe, hit that bell icon. That lets me know 
um, that um, you want to see more wind debug videos uh, it lets me know when to spend my time to make more videos um, I think I'll make more in the series of deadlocks or hang dumps but definitely if you want me to make a particular kind of video uh, just let me know in the uh, description below uh, what help do you need and I'll try to make a video about that it's been a pleasure bringing you this information I'm High Voice signing out